Hi everyone. Oh. Heather is in Buenos Aires awaiting the President and uh, Secretary of State's arrival, so you get me today. Sorry. All right. Nothing for the top. Let's uh, happy to take a question. That must mean that there's nothing going on. In the oh, there's a lot going on, Matt. There's a couple things going on. Okay. Well, um, actually, in keeping with the theme of that, though, I. I um, I have a kind of a, a smaller question, but I need to get it out of the way first. And that is, um, the Cubans are complaining that you guys are not you're limiting the number of visas that you're um, you're giving to their people, while they have been more than accommodating with your requests. Um, I got an answer to the one um, question, which had to do with the two embassies, but apparently the Cuban complaint is broader than that, and I just discovered this in the last 15 minutes, so I apologize for that. And that is that they're also complaining that you guys are denying visas for Cuban officials to come to, to go to New York or to participate in UN events. Do you have any response to that? I, I don't have anything specific, but what I can say is we are um, – the Cuban government is already aware of our concerns about visas, uh, and specifically about staffing um, at, at our embassy in Havana. Under uh, reduced staffing levels at, at the United States Embassy in Havana following the health attacks, um, every position is vital uh, to our operations. and. Both of our governments are maintains our sovereign right to issue or deny visas to specific individuals, and I would leave it at that. Well, so you don't have any response to the set the uh, related. I, I, I don't have anything uh, related, uh, anything specific on specific uh, visa cases. I don't. No, no, you know, no. But I'm talking about your your obligations under the UN host country agreement mm -hmm. and 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 granting or their complaint that you're using. Um, your authority to to deny visas to, to Matt, I'll have to I'll have to look that. into it. I don't have anything on that. All right, thanks. Sure. Let's go to uh, Francesco. Uh, one quick question, Cuba. All right, Cuba. Just, uh, Canada announced it last night that a 13th Canadian diplomat has now experienced the same health symptoms that U.S. diplomats have. Um, are you aware, I guess, of any additional U.S. cases? Uh, and, and are you doing anything to help the Canadians to try to figure out what's going on? I'm not aware of any uh, new cases where we, we did we do note that uh, Canadian case, and uh, we are in close coordination on a pretty regular basis with the Canadian government on these issues. As Francesco, I said, yeah, please. Uh, on Russia, the president said he won't be meeting with uh, President Putin in, at the G20. Does the secretary have any plan to meet with Lavrov? at the G20 or in the next days, or, in, or and did he talk with uh, Lavrov about what's going on in with Ukraine? Uh, I, the, the secretary schedule uh, at the Group of 20 summit in Buenos Aires will follow that of the president's, uh, and I have no new, uh, nothing new to announce for, for the, the secretary. No conversation with the Russians? Not aware. Uh, I'm, I have nothing, I'm not aware of any of that, no. Let's go to short sure, part. So Mr. Pompeo spoke to the Senate yesterday and made a very um, pointed case to continue military assistance to Yemen, after which the senators voted on the first procedural step to withdraw military assistance. Does the uh, Secretary of State have a reaction to that, since it seems quite um, uh, a failure of his attempt? I think the Secretary um, was spoke quite a bit yesterday uh, and made the case that uh, the timing uh, is, is not right uh, for that. And he made the case quite forcefully that um, uh, what we're trying to accomplish via, via Yemen, uh, we're on the cusp, um, and hopefully in December we're going to be supporting Special Representative Griffiths as we push towards that. Uh, did he have a reaction to the vote that followed shortly after? Uh, I haven't spoken to the Secretary, and as you know, he's, uh, he's in, on his way uh, to Buenos Aires. Please. Any, anything further? Absolutely not. Uh, the Secretary spoke on this yesterday and he was yes. clear uh, the time is right for us to, to end this violence. And so 
uh, we don't want to give Iran uh, any any further cause uh, to continue to fund uh, and and supply arms. Uh, so we are pushing um, uh, and just in support of, of the special representative Griffiths. Well, Please. Well, you that out a little bit further. Uh, when would the time be right for the for for Congress to act on? Ending support for the Saudi campaign. We are. Ever? Is there? Would there ever be a good time in this administration's view if, for Congress to weigh in on this matter, or is this something that you think the Congress should have no business in? Absolutely not. We welcome uh, um, the views of the Congress so uh, in this the, matter. The procedural. We welcome the today. views of the Congress. Um, the Secretary has uh, made quite clear th that. Uh, for uh, the Iran-backed Houthi rebels to be able to uh, establish, you know, something akin to what Les uh, you know, Lebanon's Hezbollah has done in Lebanon in the Arabian Peninsula would be destabilizing, damaging to American interests and to our uh, allies and partners in the region. I, I get that, but you say you welcome the views of Congress, and yet you're, you make the, the, the administration has made clear that the president will veto. We, this. we, appre we appreciate yeah. the views of Congress, of course, I and we we, we highly, work closely. No, you, you don't. I mean, the op-ed that the secretary wrote in the Wall Street Journal that was published yesterday was extremely harsh. Went after the, the members of the. Washington Salon, what, uh, salons and uh, whatever the experts of the foreign policy community, uh, foreign policy experts are not experts, but the, the, the community at large. So it, it's pretty clear that you don't, I mean, he called it caterwaul. Um, it's pretty clear that you don't welcome op, 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 a, a different opinion or opposing views to what you have. So I, I'm just curious as to how you can get stay, stay with a straight face that you welcome this. We, we uh, the secretary uh, has made clear uh, our position um, on, uh, on 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 the violence and the humanitarian disaster uh, that has taken place in Yemen, and we, we just announced additional measures to um, you know help alleviate some of that situation, okay. right. and and it's actually quite significant. It's worth mentioning: 131 million in emergency food assistance to the people of Yemen. Um, and and we this and that and that is why we support the special representative and we think the timing is right and we are on the cusp. Let me just and so, point out that yes, it is significant. I'm sure that it is appreciated, but that does not answer the question of how you can say you welcome Congress's views on this and then just ignore it and then essentially insult. We we cons we, we uh, consult that's, that's uh, we consult with the Congress, please. Jenny, please. Thank you so much. Uh, North Korea. Uh, do you know why is there uh, no high level talks between United States and North Korea? We, we are looking forward to high, having uh, high, high level t talks. Uh, we have, uh, we continue um, to, uh, our policy hasn't changed on North Korea. Um, progress has been made, and we are we are off to, we are hopeful that more will be made on but North Korea as well. If North Korea continues to refuse to talk, you know that the, will the United States, uh, your uh, uh, strategic patience is over. I mean, and over, or how you, your uh, the secretary, the president, been clear. Uh, we're not going to be forced into artificial, uh, um, you know, time constraints here. We, um, we've made great progress uh, at, at the, the summit in Singapore for the, the final fully verified denuclearization. Um, we are going to continue to push forward on that. And of course, uh, future dialogue will take place and it'll definitely be um, uh, something that, we're, that, that Special Representative Began uh, will be uh, leading and the, we, we're not, that's okay. And do you know that the special representative Began said that the last week he mentioned about uh, maybe they're gonna uh, close up windows, you know, because if not uh, listening, you know, anything from North Korea. So I'm what does I'm it mean? I'm sorry, Jay, I, I didn't uh, understand that they're going it, to close. Close. I mean, close the door or windows. You know, no, no longer open the windows. I don't know what that meaning is. I, I'm not familiar with that that statement. I'm not. You know, so I don't want to try I to say, parse those words. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. 
Lori, please. Um, the head of the Iraqi militia, Saab al al haq backed by Iran, recently said that the Hosh al shabi should have a role in security along Iraq's border with Syria. What's your comment on that? The security of Iraq and its borders is the responsibility of the government of Iraq, and I would defer to the Iraqi government. Iraqi government. Okay, and Secretary Pompeo condemned statements that Iranian President Rouhani made in an Islamic conference in Tehran recently when he called for Israel's destruction. Iraqi Vice President Nouri al-Maliki was at the same conference, and he spoke and said that Hezbollah, the Houthis, and the Hash al-Shabi, which is the Iraqi militias, will liberate Palestine soon. What's your comment on Maliki's statement? As you point out, it was the Secretary uh, was speaking uh, to President Rouhani's uh, comments, and uh, we have no further comment he besides the that. Vice President of an allied state you know, of yours? Laurie, we're not going to uh, react to, to all uh, world leaders' comments here, please. Well, can I, can uh, I say on that, yeah, very quickly, I have a very quick uh, question there for you. Thank you. Uh, yesterday, the U.S. mission to the United Nations circulated a draft resolution to condemn Hamas uh, because of the rocket firing. But of, of course, it begins by saying, you know, violence against all civilians is rejected and so on. But that not mention Israeli uh, or Israel in any way, shape, or form. I want to ask you first, what is the status of this draft resolution? What's going on? Did you gather enough support? Because I think you need something like 90 member states to support it or to be voted on? Side, we don't comment on draft uh, resolutions. But, but it was circulated. I mean, I have a copy. But <laughs> well, we don't comment on drafts. Yeah. Oh, can you tell us what is going on in terms of talk? I, I can't. What I would okay. say is, um, uh, you know, the, the root of uh, destabilization and violence in Gaza is Hamas. Um, and beyond that, uh, you know, the world has grown tired of Hamas's uh, violence and the violence of other bad actors in Gaza. Um, that prevents uh, any real help for the people of Today Gaza. Today being the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people, do you think the world have, have grown tired of the Israeli occupation of the West Bank 51, 51 years on? I would uh, say that Hamas's activities um, that, that, I'm not talking about continue Hamas. to prove right. that they don't really care about the Palestinians right. of Gaza, okay. well, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, what okay. about, what about you? And that's, I'm move on. What, what I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Please, but, but sure. Okay. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, two different questions on two different regions. Let me start with uh, Georgia. Do you have anything uh, on the second round of Georgia? Georgia's presidential election? What is the U.S. expectation and what is the implication uh, of this election to U.S.-Georgia relations? Thank you. Thanks, Mikey. Um, I would say the United States looks forward uh, to working with President-elect uh, Salome Zura Bishvili on continuing our close partnership with Georgia on a range of important bilateral and regional issues, including our robust security cooperation and Georgia's contributions uh, to NATO's uh, resolute support mission in Afghanistan. Um, can I move on to ask a question on DRC, Congo? The Congo, okay. Yeah, do you have anything on the closure of the embassy and why it's so, so long? Um, and do you have any updates on the terror against the U.S. As you point out, uh, the embassy uh, is still closed. Um, it has not uh, adversely impacted United States support to our ongoing efforts there uh, regarding uh, containing that Ebola out outbreak. Um, and as far as when we're going to resume operations, I would say we just got to step back and understand that the highest priority in these situations, of course, is the safety and security of uh, American citizens, including our diplomatic and our military and government officials that are serving abroad. So we are closely following the threats um, against our facilities there. And I can't comment any further uh, or more detail on the actual uh, threat reporting there.
Bravo, thank you. But in your estimation, do you think the closure of the embassy and the terrorist uh, threats is something to do with the press release by the U.S. regarding the election over there? I'm sorry, with the election? Yeah, I okay. don't have anything uh, correlated to that, no. So I have it's nothing for targeted you at, It's targeted at the U.S. announcement on the position on DRC going to have an election in December. I, I just don't have any information on that. Sorry, Nike. And, on Syria? On Syria, okay. Yes. Uh, hoping that uh, the constitutional committee will be held by the end of December. Uh, today, Astana Group has failed uh, to uh, agree on a list of members, and you are blaming Russia and uh, Iran for continue, uh, continuing to use the process to mask the Assad regimes, as you said uh, in your statement. What's the alternative now? Well, uh, Michelle, as you point out, um, the meeting did not uh, yield uh, to uh, an agreed list of members for the Syrian Constitutional Committee, and it again ended in, in stalemate. So it failed to produce progress towards advancing the political process, which is, of course, one of our goals. Um, we, we believe that establishing and convening a Constitutional Committee in, in Geneva is vital to a lasting de-escalation and a political solution to the conflict. Um, and that has broad, broad international support. We are going to uh, continue to work uh, to achieve the goals laid out in the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2254, uh, and that includes de-escalation and a reinvigorated political process. But we believe success is not going to be possible without the international community holding Damascus fully accountable for the lack of progress in resolving the conflict. How can you hold the Damascus? Uh, We're going to support the work of the United Nations Special uh, Envoy Stefan de Mistura uh, to convene uh, the committee by the end of the year and his efforts uh, in Geneva as well to broker a political process and we're going to remain engaged. We'll, we're he, there, there's a success and we'll work with both, correct. We'll remain engaged um, with the United Nations on this and other parties. And that's the way forward, including Russia. Please. Do, do you right still here. hope that, that Russia will push the regime to, to nominate the members? And since you are blaming Russia and Iran for not coordinating and, uh, and masking the Assad regime, what hope do you expect from we're going to remain engaged, we're going to support the UN process, and we're going to uh, keep engaged. Yeah, Ben, please, sure. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Um, the President's going to have a meeting with uh, President Xi at the G20. Are you expecting any kind of agreement to come out of this meeting that might uh, sort of diffuse the current tension between the two countries? Ben, I'm going to not get ahead of uh, the President in his meeting, okay? So, yeah. Okay, go to Connor. With Vladimir Putin, um, the White House announcement that, that was canceled, and that Secretary Pompeo was involved in that decision. Uh, what advice does the Secretary have for the President? Why not have that meeting and, and send a strong message face to face to Vladimir Putin about Ukraine? I mean, I would point out that happened a couple hours ago, Connor, and uh, it was aboard Air Force One. I believe that that took place, and that the Secretary was with the President at the time. So I, I don't have any. Uh, further uh, details to provide you. Um, but what's clear is uh, the, you know, the President's tweets um, on, on the subject were quite clear at what we looked for, and that is the return of the uh, Ukrainian uh, sailors as, and, and the vessels. Um, the aggression uh, that we've witnessed this week uh, is unacceptable, and a strong message has been sent. Please. The how has a strong message been sent? Just through isolation. The paper statement? Isolation. Okay. And, and but since the, the message was sent on Monday by Secretary Pompeo calling for the sailors' release, they've actually been moved from Crimea to a jail in Moscow, according to one of their lawyers. Um, is it time then to to increase your pressure, other than isolating Vladimir Putin? We, I mean, we are we are uh, our European partners from uh, NATO. Um, OSCE, European Union, have, have all issued strong statements. There have been emergency sessions that have taken place. There 
there, there are, there is a coalescing of, of opposition and strong condemnation for the aggression uh, that we've witnessed. And for the United States, uh, our, our position has been very clear from uh, the President to Ambassador Haley to Secretary Pompeo. We, we, they must return um, to U Ukraine its vessels and detain crew members. But have those statements failed if they've now moved these sailors into a different facility as opposed we, to we, them? We are going to we are going to continue to to uh, drive forward on this and to to be firm in our position. All right, let's short wait. Yeah, I have one clarification, logistical one, update request, and then one question. That's a lot. No. That sounds uh, <laughs> a, a difficult logistical too. Is, what do you uh, that, what? Uh, uh, President Trump will be having a trilateral with the Prime Minister Modi and the Japanese leader. Uh, what about the, um, any bilaterals uh, with the officials for the secretary? I, I, would, I don't want to speak uh, from the State Department on the president's schedule. No, That's about something the secretary. That, uh, I, I have nothing to announce. Uh, the secretary will be participating in the president's meetings mm -hmm. and um, assist and supporting the president on this trip, and I just don't have nothing else and to with, announce on that. with the U.S. ambassador now in Colombo, do we have any update on the U.S. position on Sri Lanka? I don't have anything new today to, to, to okay, read out. Now the okay. question is about the, the India-Pakistan, they have opened a uh, new, at the Kartarpur border, and uh, things are moving. But the Mumbai attack for which we made the statement, uh, the U.S. has uh, given more award. Uh, what is exactly, you know, um, happening behind the scenes? Like, is, are we serious? Six U.S. citizens died and nothing, you know, those people are uh, out there roaming around freely uh, and with the new prime minister, what is the U.S.? Uh, is he coming here? Is there going to be a meeting? Is there what? What is? No, Can no new, us? no new meetings to announce or, um, at, at this time. Um, I, I did, you know, I'm aware of the reports of this Kartarpur uh, uh, corridor, as yes. as you referenced there. Yes. Um, understand that it's uh, kind of a visa-free way uh, for uh, Indians to visit this important Sikh site and. Uh, of course, for the United States, we would we would welcome efforts to increase people-to-people -people ties between India and Pakistan. I'd leave it at that. Okay, and, thank you. Uh, okay, sure. Let's go right behind Nina, please. Yes, Pakistan. Nazeerudi from Air Ministry, Pakistan. So I have one question about uh, Afghanistan. Um, a couple of weeks ago, President Trump uh, on, on Twitter uh, accused Pakistan of harboring terrorists, some kind of very harsh tweet. And Prime Minister Imran Khan also tweeted there was kind of uh, exchange of harsh tweets on the Twitter, sir. But Right now, United States looking towards Pakistan to bring Taliban to the table for the peace negotiations. So do you think it's the right time for such kind of statement from U.S.? The Secretary has emphasized the uh, need for Pakistan to deliver outcomes and build confidence and trust between our two countries and our policy towards Pakistan is clear. Last questions with Dan Deleuze, please. So we had this briefing this morning on, on Iran's missile program and so on. But given this discussion about Yemen, could you just take a step back, uh, because the administration from the first day it came into office said it would roll back Iran's influence across the region. This was a top yeah. priority. We've had an array of sanctions imposed, sanctions reimposed. We had this briefing about the missiles. Has the administration succeeded in rolling back Iran in Yemen, in Syria, in Lebanon, or, or is it time to review the approach? We're going to continue to push um, uh, our, our, our approach to Iran's malign influence uh, has, has many, uh, many, many factors, and this administration is committed to uh, stopping uh, what Iran is attempting to, to, to produce both across the region and globally. Is there an example of a, of a successful case where you've, you've been managed to do that? Um, we are. We have. Uh, gotten out of the failed uh, JCPOA, something that is going to uh, allow us to finally confront uh, the totality of Iran's malign influence and to uh, preserve American interests uh, and peace both in the region and globally. And that's it. I'm going to end it there. Thanks, guys.